So, my name is Jim Gass, I'm the MD for the Gold Fist Rising, and I'm going to be just doing a little bit of a talk for five, ten minutes or so on 3D documentation and BIM, uh, and how that uh, facilitates this end to end smart asset management solution that Paul's just given us the overview of. So just quickly uh, we do the agenda. So we're just going to look at where our organisation fits within um, this end-to-end -end process, how we, our involvement in this ecosystem first came about, uh, and why we are strong advocates of this concept ourselves, uh, how we aim to add value for our customers through this concept, our own aims and predictions for the future, um, the way in which we've adapted our own business model, um, and also, perhaps most importantly, is uh, there's a video and a short presentation from Richard at Sidex which demonstrates how we are actually adopting this process in our own facilities, uh, in our own facility in Sheffield. So, just a very quick overview. So, what we essentially do at First Horizon is we provide measured surveys and uh, documentation. And it could be aerial surveys with UAVs, it could be ground penetrating radar, it could be 3D data capture, whatever. Th these sort of measured survey services is essentially what our core business is. So you may be thinking, where on earth does that fit in really with the smart asset management solution? Uh, and quite simply, it's uh, mainly, in the main, it's 3D laser scanning, so it's 3D data capture. So it's mass capture of 3D points, which I'm sure most of you in this room are, are already familiar with. So that's the core um, technology we use. But it's also um, conventional surveys, so 3D topographic information, terrain, levels, um, street furniture, etc. And also what's beneath the surface, so not just the buildings, not just the surrounding area, uh, but also what's very beneath the surface, because at the end of the day, these are also assets. Uh, and then the final part of our involvement is the asset data collection. So if you're going to use a BIM platform for digital asset management, is making sure the data that's contained within it is, is correct and the appropriate families are, are in there and the appropriate <coughs> COVID data, etc. Uh, and this just gives you uh, a bit of a sample of the different types of projects. Uh, and these are these are scan data projects, just to give you a rough rough uh, feel for the types of uh, thing that we are able to do. And you can see as well from there, there's quite a broad spectrum of sites and uh, scenarios. So we've got university buildings, um, uh, theatres, uh, petrochemical sites, plant rooms, everything um, from you know one, one both ends of the spectrum. So once we've got all that data, the 3D data, uh, the uh, buried services, etc., etc., we then the next w a way in which we um, we sort of deal with that is by creating this BIM model, which then um, is going to be used moving forward for the overall asset management plan. And again, just to give you some samples of the kind of uh, projects that we would be involved in, well, this would be again. Uh, petrochemical factories, universities, uh, train stations, whole breadth of different uh, scenarios. It can be applied to anything, it's not just buildings we're talking about here. Okay, so this is short, a little short silent video just to show how these different services that we offer, offer can be um, put together for one project. So this is actually more of a coincidence than anything else. This is a university uh, campus, a small sample data. And what's sort of slightly unique about this project, as opposed to the norm from our perspective, is that it is the buildings. Um, so we've got full uh, 3D BIM models of the buildings. We've also got the terrain, the street furniture, and we've got all the subsurface uh, information all contained within the same 3D model. So it's got all the drainage information, the cables, the pipes. Um, the whole the whole thing really. So that's a relatively new idea really in our industry. Um, so one of our main objectives, or, or and one of our main aims when we're sort of uh, trying to speak to prospective clients on this, is to look at ways in which we can sort of expand the usefulness of the data that we produce. So how can they use the 3D documentation 
and the outputs that we give them in more, more and more ways to make it more justifiable for them to go ahead and, and embrace this approach. Um, so, historically, um, most of our clients have just been using BIM um, as a means of facilitating design work. So that's normally been the catalyst when, when people have appointed us to, to do these sort of BIM projects. If they wanted to work in Revit or whatever the software is to progress the design and for that they need an existing building documented. Um, and also any sort of retrofit where you're trying to fit new new objects, new designs into an existing building, you need to know exactly what the space is and, and what you've got to work with essentially. But now there's way way more that can be uh, gained from, from these 3D data sets, particularly visualisation, we've got virtual reality, mixed reality, augmented reality, uh, and also this idea that we're talking about here today, the smart asset management, facilities management, and there's loads of other things as well. Um, so as time goes on, there's more and more value that can be gained from these 3D data sets. Um, one thing as well, uh, which fits in very nicely with this whole ecosystem concept is a lot of our clients just gain a huge amount of comfort just in actually getting to grips with what they actually own um, and, and getting that all in one central location. We speak to clients and they've literally got buildings on their side that are that big and vast that they don't even know that they've got these buildings. So just in, in getting all this under control and, and getting a better understanding of what they've got is massively important to them. Um, also, the cost of, of getting this done is, has come down significantly with technology and advancements, so it's becoming more readily available to people and people are more inclined to actually adopt this approach. There's also new technology that's sort of available now and uh, again taking it to the next level, such as like mobile methods of capture where you can capture the data whilst walking around or pushing, pushing a trolley around rather than static data capture, so it makes it much quicker uh, much more cost effective, therefore make people much uh, more inclined to, to sort of uh, adopt this. And I can see a huge potential uh, widespread adoption of this for anyone who's got any significant estate or a set of assets in mind. I think there will be a lot of people wanting to do this moving forward. So this is just a little bit about how, our, uh, how we first sort of um, got into this um, ecosystem uh, and the idea of it uh, and we've been talking to clients a lot, we've already had an interest in BIM for probably the last 10 years um, and we've talked to a lot of clients, uh, incidentally a lot of these uh, be universities and uh, education uh, organisations uh, who would have an interest in using a BIM platform for asset management. Uh, and, but nobody's really managed to do it uh, that successfully until recently. Uh, and in over the last few years, there's been a massive uh, increase, should we say, in the number of people that are um, using, using this BIM platform for asset management. So I think it, it sort of gives you a flavour of, of where the industry is at. And, and it's, in my opinion, it's inevitable that virtually all um, large organisations will, will be doing this. So, just to sort of summarise why this BIM platform is important um, for this end-to-end -end solution, it's essentially it's just the fact that it provides a simple and easy means to visualise your assets and keep them all in one place. And ultimately, that that is it. But that is a massive, um, massive benefit, really. I think Richard will sort of demonstrate a few more. The details on, on what other benefits there are, but that's essentially the main the main thing. Um, and we've also so in the past we've had a lot of customers that have used they've justified using 3D documentation and BIM um, for one particular focus. So it may be like we said mentioned earlier, construction design and retrofit applications. That's quite a common one. We've had customers again in the uni university space that wanted to use the BIM model purely for um, managing their estates and maintenance, so the ability to go out with a, an iPad type device and, and see the BIM model, interact with it and see when that um, projector was last serviced and where it was supplied for what it cost and all this stuff. And they're actually doing this, but these are just with one purpose in mind. And I think what's exciting and, and really um, 
attractive to us and for, by this ecosystem is that we're giving clients the opportunity to use this data uh, selfishly from our side because it's, 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 our, it's, it's us that needs to produce this. They can use this for loads of different applications and get a huge amount of added value from it. So just again quite quickly just to sort of give you a flavour of how, how this would work from a client's perspective. If they're wanting to go down the BIM route and they want to do the digital asset management end to end solution that we're talking about, uh, the starting point, where that, where that, what that would look like. So it's, it's either if it's a new build or it's an existing building. Um, two, they're the two main scenarios. So if, if a new build project, so again using the university um, as, a, as an example, if, if you've just recently commissioned a new building to be constructed, um, the, the universities are quite forward thinking, and I'm not just saying that because we're in this room on a campus, but they seem to be from my experience, and they are actually building in a contract requirement when they have a new building uh, created, they, the contract says that they must provide uh, digital assets uh, of, of the building to a certain specification. So it's becoming increasingly important and it's a, um, it's a contractual requirement. The trouble is though, is that often the information that they get from the contractors, they're not really, the construction company's not really at that stage yet and it's often incomplete, inaccurate or, or, or inappropriate data really. Um, so we can either, um, uh, we can make sure that the model reflects what is actually built essentially. So that's, that's one direction. If it's an existing building, normally all, all, the only information that will be available will be some crude 2D plans, if, if that at all, if that's even available, some fire plans, so we, in which case full 3D documentation is required. But whichever route uh, is required, um, the main, one of the most important things is making sure once it is, once you've initially got that model created and it's ready to facilitate this end-to-end -end concept, it's then got to be kept up to date, up to date, which is crucial. If it's not, then the whole thing will sort of fall apart. Um, so, from again, from our perspective, the two key things to remember are that the, the digital asset is also hugely valuable, not just the actual asset, the building that has been created or that you have, that you have ownership of. It's becoming equally as important to have a good digital record of that. Uh, and also, that for something that is as, as involved as the end-to-end -end concept, uh, clients want to, uh, they want this delivered as a complete solution, which is what we're essentially offering, and not a fragmented approach where you're going to one supplier for this, this uh, part of the solution and another supplier for that part, and then inevitably these things don't join together correctly. I'll just go through this one quickly. This is, all this one is about is just to say that we believe very strongly um, that this approach is a, is a good one and so much so that we've, we've, adopted, we've, we've adapted our um, own business model so that this end-to-end -end solution is, forms a key part of our, our growth strategy. We've actually taken that on board and we're already talking to existing customers and getting quite a lot of interest in those sectors of education, local authorities, factories, petrochemical, uh, and, and quite a few others. Uh, so finally, um, just we're also taking it a step further. Um, not only are we, have we evolved our uh, business plan, if you like, or business model, we're also um, starting to actually live this concept. Um, similar to the, the, the chaps at the awards last night, I noticed the electric vehicle company was saying, you know, they, they feel they need to if they're going to try and promote this concept, then they need to be living it themselves uh, and sort of practice what they preach. So that's what we're intending to do, and we are underway with that now. Uh, and to have this end to end um, solution installed at our, at our uh, offices and, and using that effectively for our own business. Um, so I'm going to hand you over to Richard from SiteDesk, and he's going to just talk to you a little bit and play a video about how this is working. Thank you.